Good everyone, I'm going to video, and today we have a review on the ME262 A1A Yabo. I know what you're thinking if you're new to this, well, if you've been around the channel a lot. Hold on a minute. Has Joe lost the plot? He's playing Jets again. Um, no, I haven't lost the plot. I've actually wanted to challenge myself a little bit. And I figured, why don't we try some Jets? And I was like, looking around the nations and trying to decide what Jets would work. Tried a few, um, the Yabo is one of them, the Arado 234C3 is another, the F84 USA is another. I tried the Meteors, they're not my cup of tea unfortunately, um, but this Yabo is definitely a lot of fun. Just don't try to expect anything in AO up tiers is all I'm saying. So, the ME262 is probably one of the most recognisable jet aircraft both in the game and in real life, for good reason. Now, in War Thunder, this thing does kind of get the short end of the stick, and what I mean by that is, is it's a perfectly capable aircraft at its own BR of 7.0. It's also reasonably capable at 7.3. You're pushing it at 7.7, but at 8.0, good luck, is all I'm saying. The 262 is the definition of power creep for Jets, and fair enough, I haven't played Jets all that much, but I can still sense the power creep, because when you're fighting stuff like F-84s, F-89s, F-3D Sky Knights, it's a, it's a lot harder to compete than what you think. Half the time they either outspeed you, outmaneuver you, or both, and that really affects this aircraft's performance in a battle. Now, luckily, I got mostly 7-3 matches, so it wasn't a huge concern. And I did get quite a few 7-0 matches. But there was a couple of 8-0s which I did struggle in. But it's still a capable aircraft, and once you learn these guns, you should be pretty golden for the most part. So, let's go over the engines of the aircraft, and let's go over the armament. So, the engines are a pair of Junkers Jumo 004B1s with 910 kilograms of thrust. These are perfectly adequate. I mean, for the BR, you're going to be finding something that has more power than these two put together. But still, it's perfectly capable. And for the most part, I found myself having good thrust. Like, it, it wasn't amazing compared to what I'm used to. But it was certainly capable. There's only one catch, however. Don't lose an engine. Because the engines on this thing are extremely fragile. And so are the wings. The wings are extremely vulnerable to wing root damage, and if you lose that, you're basically dead. There's nothing you can really do about that. If you lose an engine, you're dead. If you get crit, you're dead. Um, and if you get set or set on fire, either in engine or in fuel tanks, you're dead. There's there's not much you can do about that. Going on to the guns, we have a pair. We have English. <laughs> Slip my tongue there. Sorry. We have. Quad MK108 30mm cannons. These front ones have 30 mm, well, 80 rounds per gun, and the top ones have 100. They're perfectly nice cannons. I mean, they have a pretty decent rate of fire as well. So being careful on your trigger is certainly important. And of course, for fuel, you have two big fat fuel tanks here, and then a little fuel tank there. Luckily, there's no like internal modules in the wings other than the spars and the control cables, but chances are a bullet that penetrates or penetrates here on your wing will go into the engine and cause damage. And if you start taking engine damage, you're basically screwed. Going into the external modules, because obviously we do have a difference on this aircraft compared to a normal 262, which I've, I know there's been a lot on Reddit, saying that this plane shouldn't even be in the game. These bombs and rockets should be on the regular tech tree. Um, 262, and I agree with that, personally. We then have two massive rockets, which are... I, I haven't tried them, but I do know they fire separate. That's about it. I, I mean, I haven't played 7.0 tanks in quite a while. Then we have, of course, two 250kg bombs. These are dropped separate. They're very similar to the... I think it's the A2A that gets it. I don't have the A2A, so I'm just guessing here. Um, and then, of course, you have a 500 kilogram bomb, which is just in the centre line there. 
Overall, it was a very fun aircraft to spade, and I really enjoyed the plane itself. It was definitely a lot of fun. So how about we go take a look at that table that I usually do for these spade reviews, and let's see how the results went. I'll see you all in a minute. And welcome to my little table. If you're new to the channel, this is what I've been doing for spade reviews now. Um, this is essentially what I do to keep track of everything, and that way it's a bit more in-depth, so you can see what how matches went, how much SL, how much RP, etc. So obviously at the time, I have premium account, and obviously I still have premium account at the time of this recording. Um, that's the best way to spade jets. If you have some premium account, you blow through these like like a, like a hot knife through butter. It's honestly quite nice. And I've already learned a lot by just playing the Yabo 9 matches, and also the F80 a couple of matches, as well as the Arado. And... I've been using that knowledge to good taste, as you can see. So, battle number one was three air kills, no ground kills, no assist, didn't die, 54,203 SL, 6,384 RP. You'll notice also in the base bombing bit, I've decided to not put it in if, like, if there isn't any, because I just can't be asked. <laughs> anyway... Battle 2 was 0 air kills, 0 ground kills, 0 assists. I did die in that match, 2150 SL, 964 RP. Battle number 3 was an 8 0 match, in case anyone was curious. 1 air kill, 0 ground kills, 1 assist, didn't die, 25611 SL, 6157 RP. Battle number 4 was 4 air kills, but one of them was a bot, so do subtract that if you're one of those that calculates kill death ratio. Zero ground kills, zero assists, didn't die, 57,234 SL, 9,228 RP. Battle number five, which is, I believe this is the battle I'm going to show you today. Yes, it is. I remember this battle. Oh no, it's the next one, battle six. <laughs> um, three air kills, four ground kills, one assist, didn't die, 38,614 SL. 6,734 RP. Battle number 6, which is the battle we're going to be showcasing today. 7 kills, but of course, 4 of them were bots, so do subtract those. 26 ground kills, 0 assists, didn't die. 97,550 SL, 18,474 RP. That was a big chunk towards the spade, let's put it that way. Battle number 7 was 3 air kills, 1 ground kill, 0 assists, didn't die. 48,222 SL. 8,722 RP and 0 0.003 base bomb. I just fired the R4M rockets to see what they'd do. I brought them along for that match and that match only. Battle number 8 was 4 air kills, but of course one of them was a bot. 0 ground kills, 0 assists, didn't die, 51,508 SL, 6,229 RP. And finally, battle number 9, which is a fucking heartbreak. 4 air kills, 5 ground kills, 1 assist, I did die, 51,079 SL, 10,070 RP. If anyone would like to know why that um, that match was a heartbreak, ask in the comments and I'll tell you, it was a freaking heartbreak. But, I hope that gives you an idea of how my spade went for the Yabo, it was definitely a lot of fun. I, I really did enjoy it, and personally speaking, this is easily one of the more fun jets I've flown. Bear in mind I've hardly flown any jets. But this was definitely up there. But of course we're going to go to Battle 6 which is on... I think it's on one of the Russian maps. And we're going to see how that went. So I'll see you all in a minute. And welcome to the match. So as you can tell starting off I'm climbing at 10 degrees. This seems to be the best climb angle for me. I tend to keep my airspeed around the 300 miles per hour region which is around 450... 500 kilometers an hour? I don't know kilometers an hour, okay? Give me a credit. <laughs> and as you can tell, in this match, this is a 7-0 match down tier. At least for me. And this was a rather interesting match. Not just because I have a subscriber with me, one of my trusty subscribers, Munchkin, who's doing his daily. But also this match actually caught my eye for a couple of reasons. Not only did it showcase the Munchkin that I can actually fly a jet decently, it also... we also noticed something part way through the match, and we'll 
we'll point that out as time goes on. So as you can tell on the enemy team, they mostly have F2Gs and they... I don't even think they have any jets. I mean, the A2D was a close... Well, I mean, they only have one jet, sorry, they have an F3D. Um, but that's that's what we've noticed anyway, like... Um, I'm just going to close these. Um, that That's one thing we noticed, like, if we get F2G spam, the 262 tends to get it down to here, and it is bliss if you get it down to here. If you keep your speed up, you're pretty much untouchable, and it's lovely for that. So here I spot this F2G pilot who is not being the smartest tool in the shed. I believe he's AFK climbing, but one short tap in the 30s and he's disintegrated. Was well, rather nice to have that, to be honest. Kill number one. Now, of course, this does mean that over time, the 262 will face matches where it can't really compete, such as the AO matches. Your biggest threats are going to be, as I said, F3Ds, F84s, F80s, and if you're unfortunate enough, SU11. So. We have to obviously get involved, and as you can see over there, there's quite a few F2Gs, and F2Gs are pretty dangerous. That You can outrun them, that, that's no problem at all, you can outrun them. But the point is, is that you are going to be struggling to fight them sometimes. And as a result, you really do have to consider the best course of action. I decided to turn away keep my airspeed high in case they spotted me and came for me and turn away and climb at 10 degrees because at the end of the day the higher I go the F2G will perform worse. For those that want to engage a um, F2G you want to engage it above three and a half kilometers like 3.7 kilometers. So down there this is where the moment I see red and I'm sure some of you are probably questioning why? Well, that pilot down there, Mr. Karuna1808, used to be part of this channel. Let's let's put it that way. I'm not I'm not going any further than that. But it's at this moment where I recognised him, and I started to see red because let's just say there was a lot of there was a lot of shit that went on. Let's put it that way. Now, seeing red is not a good thing in a jet, but when you're 7-0 top dog, it's not so bad. So obviously Munchkin is spectating me, that's what we call him. I know his username is Quebelcop, but we just call him Munchkin because reasons. And this is the moment where I obviously start to see red, and whilst I wouldn't recommend doing this, I have the speed for days. This 262 doesn't rip to like a thousand kilometers an hour anyway. It's got a ridiculous flight model. Now, of course, I do want to take out the other F2G because um, Forsaken Shadow, one of my most loyal subscribers, um, he shares a username similar to that guy, so that's why. So, as you saw there, Karuna decided to dive away, which is a smart move because obviously I'm doing 600 miles an hour. I don't really want to get in that sort of range. Try to get the lead in, but of course, the controllability of this thing does start to lose its touch once you get above 500 miles per hour. But I keep my speed up, I just go back up, and he cannot touch me. If he pulls into the vertical, he dies. If he doesn't pull into the vertical, well, he's gonna die. Let's, let's put it that way. So obviously, I do have a teammate backing me up here, but of course, I am surrounded by F2Gs and also a P51H, which is down there as well. He's just not been marked yet. And there he is. So now I'm deciding who to go for. My initial target was going to be the P51. And even though I'm not paying too much attention to my left, I decided the P51H was the best target for the moment. Short burst. And there he goes. Kill number two. And this is the moment where Karuna decides to swing it round and he makes a fatal mistake. He commits to the head on. He does score a hit, but I blow his vertical stabilizer off. And you will start hearing like a jet 
struggling noise here. That that's just a replay bug. That's only when you take engine damage that that happens. Another FTG comes for a head-on. I go for the shot anyway, but I couldn't quite get the lead in. And I use my speed that I've built up and keep on going. That's the best way to fly the 262. If you've got a, a prop that's turning behind your butt, just put your nose down, throttle away. And of course, this wouldn't be me if I wanted to finish the job that I started. I'm looking behind me, making sure the F2G cannot catch me. And well, as you can see, the poor bastard in front of me is trying to keep it in the air, but he can't. I get it nice and close. What about the sky for kill number three? And that's my final air kill for the match. Of course, I don't turn back. That's one thing you need to notice. I don't turn back. I need to keep my speed up. If that F2G catches me, I'm as good as dead. So I keep my speed up and I wait for the Meteor to back me up. I forgot to mention, um, in this match as well, we've we've also been having a good chat because um, obviously I was explaining to the team that I'm not the best jet pilot and I said to them that I've been learning and stuff like that. I bait for the Meteor, but the, the media, that's the Meteor's kill. I was thinking about finishing it off, but then I checked the damage and I was like, yeah, he's screwed. That's the Meteor's. I pulled off immediately and I let him know in chat. And well, that's the best bit of teamwork I've had in a while. But of course, there's still a couple of enemy aircraft left. There's that Ki-84 and also a B-29. Which is probably one of the more dangerous aircraft that you're going to meet is in the B-29. Because they're very hard to intercept for the most part. And, well, they're just very fucking annoying. Let's put it that way. Because half the time they're just going to spray at one and a half kilometers. If they hit you once, you're as good as dead. At this moment, however, it's time to farm. There's only the B-29 left, and, well, there's no real point in wasting time and just getting to farming, which you can only really kill the light targets if you don't have bombs or rockets strapped, but it's good enough. I'm going to leave it here because I think that concludes it nicely. So what did I think to the 262? Well, it was certainly a nice surprise. To say that I've been learning through YouTube and not actually putting any of the stuff that I'd learned to the test, this plane was definitely a good test for that. Even though I did get a bit slapped in the occasional 80 up tier, and in one case even a 70 down tier, this plane kicks ass. You just have to learn what you can and can't fight, and if you can't fight it, go to your team. Chances are they're going to be able to. But anyway, I'm going to let you guys off. I hope you enjoyed today's review on the ME262A1A Yabo. That is a mouthful. And I will catch you all on the next one.